Good. So today's session is 10 practical steps to launching your first ebook. All right. 10 practical steps to launch your first ebook. And this is brought to you by seller.co. All right. So if you, this is your first time, never try seller, go try them. They are like super, super, super hot on the digital space right now. They have brought a lot of solutions our way. I'm so happy to have them. All right. So I've been introducing myself in a bit, but let's get right into it. I'm hoping that this session is going to be very quick. So I'm looking at max one hour, right? If people have a few questions, we can tip it up a bit. But I'm going to just try to be very snappy with this and get the most information across. Oh, that's fine. Okay, let's get started. So um, who is this training for? I believe you are here. You have your reason for being here. And I want to believe you're one of these people, right? You're probably somebody who, you know, you've tried before. You've tried publishing. You've tried, you know, in the past or maybe now. You're looking for publishers who will take your book and help you bring it to reality and all of that you know you're probably that kind of person who's looking for a publisher and no matter how you've written to them publishers they are not probably answering you i mean this is a this was the state of affairs before we got so into digital into the digital space or before we had the amazon and the like this was the real state of affairs you would actually have your manuscript and then you start looking for a publisher you write a lot of publishers they'll read your manuscript they'll say no we're not interested in you no, we don't think we, we are ready for you at this time. Maybe some other time. They'll turn you down and all of that. We have those scenarios. So I believe I'm talking to somebody who is here and is, is in this situation or who will watch this video later and will resonate with this. Somebody else here is like, I finished writing. What next? Okay, so ebook, yes. I've been writing my manuscript. I've written it. It's in Word documents. It's in Google Docs. What next? And they don't know what to do. Okay, what do I do next? Empty. Nothing to do, no, 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 no idea of what to do. The next person there is like, how did he sell his book so fast? You know, you're probably seeing others selling. They just launched their book which day. They've sold how many copies? 500 copies, 1,000 copies. Right? Ah, how did you do it so fast? What kind of technique are you using? What kind of psychology is going on here? Please come and tell us. You are shocked. Are you here? I mean, if you are one of these people, please just raise your hand or tell me in the comment section. Let me know which of you is here. All right? Are you that person who is afraid or you don't even know where to begin? You're like, oh. Where do I even start? I want to do this, but how do I even start? What do I do first? After the first, what do I do next? What do I do next? How do I proceed to the next and stuff? Are you that person? Drop in the comment section. And are you that person that just keeps procrastinating? Since 2019, you said you write that book. Today is 2020, April. April is coming to an end. You have not written Shinbai. You've not written anything. Oh, I'm sorry for my mannerisms. If you are here and you are not in Nigeria, I'm really sorry. I'm going to try and tone down a bit <laughs> on my on my language. But yeah, just some of those slangs I use once in a while. I'll tone it down. All right. Welcome. I see something from Ghana here, South Africa. Welcome. Good to have you here. All right. I'll be introducing myself in a bit, so it's not a problem. But I hope you can hear me loud and clear. So are you that person who keeps on procrastinating and you kept on pushing and pushing and you never get it done? You say you will start tomorrow. You kept it there in your, in your, on your desktop, waiting to pick it up tomorrow. Tomorrow passed or tomorrow is going to pass and you know you're not going to touch it. All right. Are you that person? All right. So you probably fall in any of the situations or you are, your own situation is not here and it's just maybe something else. Maybe village people. <laughs> Maybe any reason at all. Maybe you just can't figure yourself around it. Or maybe you've written and you don't know how to publish it. There's so many reasons. I want you to drop them in the comment, comment sessions. Let's know who is here. All right. So let's step right into it. So in today's session, we'll cover the following 10 steps. All right. We'll cover 10 steps to launching your ebook. I'll list them one after the other for you. So each of these steps that I think were very paramount to this. 10 steps to launching your ebook. Then we'll also treat why you do not even, of course, we're covering things like why you do not have to be a writer to author an ebook. I know the topic for this webinar is 10 steps to writing your, launching your ebook, even if you are not a writer. I mean, even if you don't see yourself as a writer. I know this is maybe a problem for people because a lot of us feel, oh, well, I'm not so intellectual. Am I, am I really that book person? Can I be an author? I don't see myself in that light. Ah, no, no, no. I don't think people, people see me in that light. Can I really do this? Don't worry. We'll treat all of that, okay? And then I'll also be talking about how you can step into this afraid. So even if you're afraid, do it afraid. I'm not telling you to be bold. Mm -mm. You don't have to be bold to do this. Do it afraid, okay? So, um, I'm going to be fluctuating between my slides and seeing the chats. But no problem. You can drop your comments. And while we skim through, I'll be looking for the questions 
at some point in the lecture. All right, so this is who I am. My name is Amba Eyanga Jakai. I'm the founder of Ideno Dread. So many of you can find me out at Ideno Dread on Instagram, on Facebook, even on YouTube at Ideno Dread. What I do is I help people create and launch digital products and programs so that they can reach more people, make more impact, and earn more money. I've been able to do this for the past. In fact, I went calling into this in 2019. Before then, I was a digital marketer broadly, all right? But I went calling to digital products and services from 2019. And one of the core things I went in with was this, ebooks, which is why it's one of my favorite topics to teach, ebooks, all right? I'll be showing you in the next slide a picture that you see how far we've gone with this, all right? So I've helped over 250 people, maybe counting now to over 300. I've helped them establish themselves as experts, and end six to seven figures by monetizing their skills, knowledge, and expertise. So however way they come, do you have knowledge? Do you have a skill? Do you have some kind of expertise? Do you have some kind of experience? Come, let's turn it into money for you. So I start earning income from what you have on your inside. My work has got me recognized. I've been recognized by a few um, media platforms. Um, leading Ladies Africa as of 2020 recognized me as top 100 as 100 leading ladies in Africa, most inspiring women in Africa. I see ladies in Africa. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow, you guys know me. Wow, nice. And well, I'm really grateful for the opportunity this has given me, the exposure. And guys, it will shock you, to shock you to know that many of this recognition I got came as a result of one little step I took. And we'll go, we'll go, we'll go gradually into it and I'll be sharing my story as we go, okay? So like I said, you can always find me on Instagram at Ideno Dread. Feel free to follow. Just let me know you are in this webinar and I'll be glad to hang out with you. <laughs> All right. So this is like a snapshot. This is just a fraction of people I've worked with. People have helped launch their books or people who have been through my program. And my program, you'll see shortly in the next slide. My program is called the ebook launch program. We kind of, we, it, it was actually called the 30 days ebook challenge. We turned it into the name, the ebook launch program, but whatever way it works. It's just a 30 days program where we help people launch their book in 30 days. So it's an accountability program. This is just a snapshot of the number of people I've worked with, with bringing their books, their mind, their intellect, their ideas, their knowledge, their experience, whatever they have in their head and trying to turn it into ebooks. This project is so dear to me and I've done it for the past, I started since 2019. So let's say we've done two years on this and it's been amazing. Every month or every two months, we help people launch their books. And it's been an amazing journey. All right. This is it. And of course, I'll be talking about this some more when we step right into the training. But if you want to be part of us, we are launching our next batch, which is our 14th cohort on the 1st of March. Sorry, 1st of May. So we're starting. 30 days start from the 1st of May. And by the, by the last day of May, they should be ready to launch their book on the 1st of June. So that's how much fun we have in there. We help you put it together. We help you get the inspiration you need. So if you are that person who keeps procrastinate, procrastinating, we help you put your head down and get this done. We give you the tools, the resources. We give you the training, everything you need. So you have no excuse. And then we are there to cheer you on. You see the people I showed you on the last slide, they're all there in the same community, ready to encourage you if you are lost, to help you decide on your topic, help you if you have questions, if you're confused, if you feel you've lost morale, ginger you. I mean, it's so much fun we have in there. And I call them my team. We're just doing this together. I've been doing it for the past two, over two years right now. And it's been an amazing ride. So if you want to join us and get started on the first of May, that is the link right there. We have our products on sale, as you know, and you can always sign up and, you know, be part of us. All right. So um, I have a few requests on this presentation. I want you to stay with me to the end. Please don't leave. I have some important information that I'll be sharing with you that I don't know if you've heard it elsewhere, or if you will, but I believe it will come across to you in a very, very unique kind of way. So I hope you stay to the end. Don't worry, I'll try to make it brief. Limit all distraction. If you have to use an earpiece, please do so. Grab a notepad and pen to take the points, the steps I'll be sharing with you, and drop your comments and questions in the chat box, and I'll be looking at them from time to time, okay? But I will allow, I'll try to make it not distract me, but maybe at some point I look at the questions and then come back, or maybe we'll leave them to the end. But however way, I have um, Lucky, who is here from Sela, and she'll be helping me out to identify the questions so that we answer them at the end. All right, so let's go right in. Are you ready? Please drop yes, yes, yes in the comment box. Yes, 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 let me know. Are you ready? Are you ready for this session? 
Yes, I want to see the ginger. I want to see who is ready to hear me tonight. So you want to launch an ebook, huh? Mm -hmm. Time to talk. You want to launch an ebook. The first thing I want to ask you is when are you launching it? Because many of us fall in that trap of saying, I want to launch an ebook someday. <laughs> and that's what happens. Someday never comes because someday was never definite. You need definition. You need to fix a date, which is why when we do our ebook, Community, our ebook launch program, 30 Days Challenge, it is to challenge you to finish it in 30 days. So you know you're launching on the 1st of June. If you don't launch it, we kick you out. You did not perform. That's what we do. We evict you. We call it eviction. <laughs> so it's so much fun because they want to get it done so that they don't get evicted. And that works. It has worked for, it has worked for us for the past two and a half, almost, yeah, we started in April 2019. So it has worked for us for, for two years now. And look at us. March 2019, not April. Look at us, how far we've come. Evicted people who don't finish. And it turns out that when they leave, they end up finishing it outside. That's because we've sown a seed in their hearts. And they started something, and it never leaves them. They get finished it. But I don't want anybody here who joins us to not finish, because I don't like non-finishers. <laughs> anyway, so if you want to launch your ebook, you have to think about the date. And that is the first thing that has to be in your mind, the launch date. Before you start thinking about, before you step right into the 10 steps, what date are you launching? You have to start from the end. Give yourself a target and walk towards that target. It's like doing your wedding. You don't just start planning your wedding without a date. You fix a date even if the money is not there, even if you don't have a hall yet, even though you've not bought the wedding gown. Just fix the date. And then everything works towards that date. That's how it is. Fix a date. Some of you don't make, please don't make that mistake of saying you want to write an, a book and then just writing. You don't have a date. You don't have anything holding you accountable. Please fix a date. That would hold you bound. What we do on our challenge is that we let them not just fix a date, but announce it publicly. That's part of the challenge. Announce that date publicly. Tell people that you're launching your book on the 1st of June. So that even if by yourself, you don't respect yourself, you respect your integrity outside. Because people are waiting for the 1st of June for your book on the 1st of June. So you get my point. As much as possible, fix a date and hold yourself to it. Put it publicly. Let people hold you accountable to it. All right. So if you are here and you haven't fixed the date, I need you to do so. Or you come and join our challenge and get ready to launch on the 1st of June. All right. So let's step right into it, right? Some of you, if you, if you are here and you just bumped on this class and you don't know what they're talking about, okay, what is ebook? Ebook just simply means electronic version of the book. So mainly a book online, e-version. So it's an online book, all right? So if you're here and you were lost on that, I just wanted to clear that out. Now, the first step, get your notes out. I hope you already did. <laughs> the first step to writing, launching your ebook is this. Decide what your ebook will be about. So you want to write a book. What is it going to be about? And that's what everybody else is going to ask you. Even when you come on our telling, we're going to ask you, okay, what do you want to write about? Now, it's not compulsory to have the name of the title in your head yet. I don't, I don't force people to do that. What I, work, I like to say is that, okay, let's have an idea. We can talk about the title and make it fancy and marketable later, but let's have an idea. What are you writing about? What do you want to write about? And there are different ways you can look at this. It could be that you want to share an idea that you think is so important, or you've identified a gap in your industry, a problem that you've identified, and you think you have the answer to it, and you can write on it, all right? Or you want to write an autobiography of somebody you know, or you know you want to write the biography of your own life or the experiences you've been through. You want to share them. I mean, I've, I've worked with a lot of people on our program who have done many of these things. People who have not come to write novels, right? I mean, true story or fiction, anyone we've had that on our program. You know, the other time about somebody who shared a biography, what she did was, I love what she did. Her mother was turning 60. And so she decided to write the story of her mother's life and surprise her mom with that book. That was just an amazing one for me. Like, that, I will never forget that because it was so touching and it's something like building a legacy, right? Her mother didn't even know that was coming because she wanted to honor her mother who's, who, who grew them as kids, as a single mom. I decided to write a biography and gift it to her mother on her 60th birthday. So on that day, she shared the book. So what she did was that she printed it. After releasing the ebook. She now went forward to go and print it. And that's what I teach people on the program. That when you come and write a book here, when you come to author a book, I don't like to call it writing. I, call it, I like to call it author. We call ourselves authorities in there. Author. From the word author. Authorities. All right? So what I like to say is that are you here to write a PDF or an ebook? 
because they are two different things. If you come in and write a PDF, you all know what PDFs look like. Download the PDF, download these cheat sheets. They all look the same way. They are in A4 size PDF. When you come into our program to write a book, you write a proper book. Why? Because tomorrow you may decide that you want to publish that book. Oh my God, I should have shown you some pictures. But if you go to my page, you'll see them on Instagram. You may decide, Fumi did that. She wrote an ebook, right? And um, you may know her, Fumi um, um, Agoin, that's her brand. I've forgotten Agoin something. <laughs> oh my God, help me. Anyways, but Fumi on our program did that. She launched her ebook and just one of those times she was doing an ad promoting the book, um, TVC, the TV station, reached out to her and said, can you come on our show? And when you're coming, can you come with your book? That's how she ran straight to the printer and printed that book, appeared in the station the next day. Do you see? So what we do is that we teach you not to create, not to, we're not here to create PDFs. We're here to create books, proper books. So you learn how to properly create a book, write it the right way, you know, put, put the chapters in order, Put the sequence in order from introduction, dedication, all of that. Put it together. So if you want to get your ISBN, which is the standard number for books, you know, teach you how to get it in your book. Put it all together so that if tomorrow you decide that you want to print, you just need to bring that book from your folder, take it to the printer, print it and in the proper book. If tomorrow you want to put it on Amazon, it's a proper book on Amazon. And people can print it from the Amazon store and have, it's a, have it at, as Amazon paperback. All of that is what we do. And that's why our program has lasted this long because we offer you value that are rich. All right, so I was talking about um, the lady who did it for her mom. That's, you know, it's so amazing. We had somebody else who, you know, she lost her sister um, years ago and her sister had written a book like a few years before she passed on. And she felt, you know, this urge in her heart to help to rewrite that book. She came on the program and rewrote the book. Amazing. I mean, I'm just showing you the different reasons why you may choose to write a book, you know, different reasons. It has to be something that you're looking to deliver. Is it value? For me, my first ever ebook was a book called How to Write Your First Ebook. I launched it 1st of March 2019. And that book has brought me a mighty long journey. From that one book, I've been able to help over 300 people write ebooks because I launched an ebook called How to Write Your First Ebook. It was even free, and which will step into it as we go about free book, non free book. I believe I'm sure a lot of you have questions on that, but let's move forward so that we don't dwell on this. The next step is define your target audience, right? It's not enough that you want to write a book. It's not enough that you've decided on the idea, but maybe you've not chosen the topic. That's still okay. But who are the people that need to read this book? Some of us make the mistake of thinking that our book is for everyone. No, no, no. Please cross this out. Your book is not for everyone. Some of us think, oh, okay, I'm going to write a book, and then, okay, when I launch it, we now start rushing to say, ah, sister, I have not bought my book, oh. Uh, you now start pushing everybody you ask to buy your book. Who told you they want to buy the book? They just buy it to make you feel good. They won't read it. Your book is not for them. Let me say you write a book like now. Maybe I wrote a book on 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 digital marketing or something on Facebook ads, and I'm, I start pushing my sisters. <laughs> they are not even interested in that. So your your they are not my audience. They are not my audience. I am not my audience. You know, find who your target market is and create the book for. Of course, create the book for them. Don't do it the other way where you create the book and then you start looking for the target. It's wrong. Think about it this way. Who is the target market? Who would this book serve? Before you go ahead and start creating, these are questions that need to be answered. So who is my target market? Do you want to serve people in your space? Do you want to maybe your niche? Do you want to, but as much as possible, I, I like to ask that you specify your niche. Don't go too broad. Don't think you're going to write a book, a book for the whole Nigeria. That's not going to work. <laughs> All right. Specify who your target market is and create the book that answers to their specific needs. All right. Next step here is craft your title. I should have put, put this, you know, and said working title because remember what I said earlier, you don't have to get it right from the beginning. As long as you have the idea, right, that this is the idea of what you want to write about. Then start with a working title, a tentative title. Start with something that fits, that kind of looks good. For now, when you go forward, you can change the title at the end. 
maybe when it's clearer, you've written a few chapters, your brain is sharper at this point, you've gotten ideas from others, you've done your research, you've, you know, sold it, you've, you know, there's so many things you can do that will get it more defined in your head. Then you step right into defining the title before you go and, you know, put it out there to the public. You know, put it, I mean, before you go and publish it at scale, that's what I mean. Or rather, yeah, publish it out for more people to see it. All right, but so it's important that you craft your working title. What does it look like? On our program, what we do is that we tell you, give us three topics you think you want to write about. What? Give us three off the top of your head. This is your idea, right? You want to write about money. Or you want to write about marriage. Or you want to write about pregnancy. Or you want to write about, you know, relationships. What am I in that angle? Or you want to write about physics or whatever, man. <laughs> you know? What you know the idea now? What three topics do you think you can come up with? Let's start from there. When you give us, we now give you back, and that's how it works. So people now start bringing out three wild topics they can't even figure, but it's just wild in their head, and that's how we refine it for you. So the whole community comes together to say, okay, how about we do it this way? Okay, these are my suggestions. What do you think? This looks better. Oh, this will market to me just right. Oh yes, I'm your target market. This sounds just good for me. Okay, how about we tweak it this way? How about we make it sound like this? How about, you know, and that's how it works in there. So it's okay to work with a working title and then later on refine it. We don't hold you bound with that. Okay, this is it, stamp it, sealed, stamped. No, 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 it's not stamped. It's not printed on stone that it can't be taken off. You can always edit it later. You can work around it later. We had a lot of people change their titles later. Because as they kept on writing, they realized that it got more clarity and they thought, okay, this title doesn't really suit what I'm writing. The idea is the same, but the title doesn't really depict where I'm going. And that works. So allow room for that. That's why you're a creative person. Allow room for a lot of changes that may happen so that you don't, you know, cast things on stone and then you're left handicapped. All right. So craft your working title. The next step there is validate your book idea, validation. It is too, too important, all right? So the reason why I put crafting your book title was important there, I should have put it after, but let's put it before why, because this will help you in validation. And by validation, I'm talking about things like selling that book first, selling that book first. Sell, pre-sell. Some of the people you see who do pre-sales, guess what? The book is not even ready. They haven't even started writing. They have not put pen on paper. They are pre-selling it because they want to see if people will buy it. They want to see if there's a market for this book. So this is a good way to know your market. This is a good way to know if your book is something people want by pre-selling it. You, some of you may know that book by Michelle Obama. It called, it was, um, the name of the book was, um, or rather, is Becoming Right. Guess what? Before Michelle printed that book, she put it out on pre-sale. That book sold over a million copies, became a bestseller before the book was written. That is how shocking this can be. A lot of people you see who put out books and say the book will be ready on August, blah, blah, blah. They have not put pen on paper. They have not started writing. The reason why people pre-sell is so that they can validate, so that they can prove to themselves that this book is valuable and people want it. Then they go ahead and write it. So, you know that working title you've come up with. Put it out. Um, I'll share it, a few tools with you. Turn it into a cover. I mean, design a cover. Put it out there. Turn it into a mock-up. A mock-up is like a graphical representation of what your book could look like. I'll show you a sample of that. But let's see what your book will look like. Put it out and tell people, yes, guys, this is it. Coming out on blah, blah, blah dates. Um, this is how much it's going for. Pre-order starts on Tuesday. Get ready to... Um, all the details will be out, so get ready to bring out your credit card, start paying. You know, put it out there, let people start buying. The moment, guys, let this, let this stick. The moment one person buys your book, by one person, I don't mean your cousin or your father or your mother. Remember I said those are not your target audiences at all. By one person, I mean a total stranger. Not somebody who just wants to patronize you because they are your friend or somebody who, oh, because you bought for them the last day, let them buy from you too. They are not your market, don't let them deceive you. Total strangers who don't know you buy that book. Then you know that you are in business. Then you know that you should proceed to, to write this book because there are more people like that stranger who need what is inside this book. Guess what? They are buying the book even without reading it. Thank you for that, Tasty Corridor. Tasty Corridor is her name, Fumi. Yes. They are buying the book because they're buying the book because of, of, of the idea and what you've sold to them. 
They've not even read the book, but they paid for it. That proves a lot. That proves a lot. They have not seen the content of the book, but they've paid for it. That is validation. Another way to validate your book is to do a research, do a broad research. Go to platforms like Amazon, go to platforms that they sell books, and try to Google or try to search for the title of your book or the topic around your book. Guess what? If you don't find topics on that, if you don't write, if you don't find, um, if you don't find similar ideas on your book, there's a tendency that that book will not sell. There's a tendency that people are not hungry for it. Because guess what? It is where fish is that fisherman used to go and fish. <laughs> so if you want to just say one day, you want to write a book out of the blues and say, oh, why is that more about shapeless? Well, I don't know, maybe there's a book on that. And you think, hmm, somebody has not written on this, but you go and check. I'm more about shapeless. Why? You now go and check. You now look for why is that more about shapeless. And then um, you decide that you want to write your book on, since nobody has written on it, you write on it. You're going to be causing yourself some havoc. Now, that may work in academic sense, on to the point that people write books or write articles or look for a gap and unspoken communication or conversation and decide to write on it. Maybe a gap in conversations. Why didn't this person cover this? I'm going to write and do a research to cover what was missed out. It's different when you're doing research. But when you are doing books for commercial purposes and you're selling books like this, you have to do it based on people's interests. You have to go where the fish is. You have to go where the river is full because that's where the market is. All right. So feel free to express yourself. So research... Go do your research, go check sites, go check Amazon. Then this is what I want you to, to further search for. Outside of searching for your idea and to see whether it's being written about, go search the comment section. Go search the, the, the reviews people are giving about that book or about that article that was written. Go search the reviews. In the reviews are secrets that can help you refine your book better because in the reviews, people will be asking questions saying, oh, but you didn't treat this. Oh, but I have a challenge with it. Oh, but blah, blah, blah. And that, those are the gaps that you can fill to make your book more valuable than that book you saw. You get my point? All right. So research and most importantly, sell it first. Do a pre-sale and have that book out in the open. Let people see it and let people pay for it. Then you're in business. Go and write that book. All right. Thank you, guys. So you can all hear me. All right. So the next point, step five is... When you are done and you found somebody who is ready to buy your book and now you, you know you're in business, step right into breaking down the outline of your book, the contents, the chapters. How is this book going to look like? Okay, I want to write about eight chapters. I want to write about six chapters. I want to write five chapters. How is this going to play out? This is how to go about it, all right? So I always advise that if you're doing an ebook, don't go too bulky. You know where you see people write 120 pages book, one 250, 400 pages book, please, I beg you in the name of God. <laughs> please, for ebooks, because of the attention span, you know, when people are on their phones, they get easily distracted. So they are reading the book, and then notification just came alert. They've gone. Before they'll come back to that book, it's okay. Unless that book was damn so good, they've gone. And they would need some kind of revelation to come back or some kind of commitment to come back. Or they're reading and then, ah, they also saw that WhatsApp notification from their friend or their family or whatever, and they've gone. So I always advise when people ask me, how long should my book be? I tell them, please, if it's an ebook, try to stick between, between the frame of 30 to 50 pages. You know, if you want to go higher, just be careful with that because your book has to be so, so good because people are going to be distracted. They are using their phones. It's an ebook. Don't forget. If you make it too voluminous, that's where you're going to struggle with a lot of people not finishing your book, and you don't want that happening. You wrote it for them to finish it, actually. You know. So um, let's step right into back to context. Outline the ebook, the chapters, and the content. So don't go too broad and say you want to write twenty chapters. That's too much because that would make you to write overboard. All right. So keep it in track. Keep it in. You know. I just like to tell people maybe stay stick to. Max eight to ten chapters. Yeah. My first book, actually, the book I told you all about, my first ever ebook, how to write your first ebook, was actually just twenty eight pages. Twenty eight pages, and the chapters were so short. I mean, all that don't matter. What matters is what is inside. Can the information inside help somebody? And that's what matters. All right. So don't be so carried away with ah, this book is only two pages. Ah, 
Oh, no, sorry, two pages is too little. That one is a PDF. But you know, this book is just uh, uh, just 20 pages. Ah, no, 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 I have to add more. Part it up. Then places that you're you're right, you're supposed to write because you're not right as a result of you're not start increasing the English so that it will expand. Please don't trick anybody, it's not important, it's not necessary. Sorry. All right, so align your ebook chapter and content. I like to use platforms like you know um Google Docs. And I start aligning what each chapter will look like. And I'll give you an idea of what how that can play out. All right. So use a chapter to address each problem. So you've broken down, maybe you're writing on an idea or a problem that you've identified that you want to solve. Use a chapter to address this pro each problem. So yes, you have your introduction. Introduction is there for you to explain a few things, blah, 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 blah. You know, and why your you, the rationale behind writing this book, and you know why you think this book will help the reader, and you step right into it and tell them what to expect in the following chapters, and that's what introduction will have. Then you step right into chapter one. Maybe you, um, of course, don't forget that introduction may have explained what the term is, what you, why you went into this, what it actually means to your sector, blah blah blah. Then you step right into what is the problem, break down into the next chapter. The first problem you identified. Don't delay too much and say, okay, the next chapter is now Thanksgiving. I'm going to thank you all for welcoming me for being reading this book. Don't do that. You're going to lose them. So let your first chapter be punchy. I like what Aki Alabi did with his book, uh, Small Money, Big Small Business, Big Money. Yeah, that's the name. You know, punchy chapters. Chapter one, punchy. Chapter two, punchy. And what the tricky thing he also did was, he made us all go read the first two chapters free of charge. Once you read it and you feel it's so good, then buy the rest of the book. Buy the real book, the full book. And that's what a lot of us did. I remember when I shared it with my community, my ebook community. And I told them, don't worry, the first two chapters free. They all ran to go and read it. The next thing, others were flying. They were ordering the book here, left, right, and center. That is the whole idea. Don't say you're going to leave the juice to later. Give them the juice now. Don't wait. Give it as it is hot. Hmm? Pardon me if you're not Nigerian. Give it as it's hot, as it's still piping hot, all right? So yes, give it and keep making it hot, all right? If you feel you've lost steam, then that's the end of the book. It, because the moment you lose steam, the reader is also going to lose steam, okay? So let's move. All right, the next step, step six, we are almost at the end, is flesh out your content. So yes, you've delivered your, con your titles, sorry, your chapters, which is answering different questions or uh, and then now it's time to actually go go right go right into the, the the business of the day writing right and when that happens on our community everyone a community that is really buzzy and you know everybody sharing ideas when it's time to write we all know that it's time to keep quiet so it almost feels like a proper lecture room or and now, now it's time for examination so everyone knows not to shh, shh, people are writing and then we have a few days we designate to just writing. And so we know that eh, eh, no noise here. All the topics have been selected. People, now it's time to write. And then we do check-ins often and ask them, so how is it going? Are you losing steam? Do you need some inspiration? You can close your laptop and go hang out, go have a drink, go watch a film. When you come back, you have extra inspiration. And it's just fun to see it actually happen. Sometimes we even have people take photos of themselves writing and the stress they're going through. And we have these kind of photos where people are like, and their laptops and they screenshot their laptops. It's so much fun. Or we have people who are stuck and then they need somebody to come and on, 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 you know, to come and take them out of that, that stage they are in where they are stuck. And we have a lot of people supporting each other, even traveling to other people's houses to just go and, you know, give them inspiration. It's just a, a lovely community we have there. And amazing, amazing. I just love the fact that we have that going and it's still alive to date. All right, so flesh out your content. If you need inspiration, go for a walk. Because sometimes you'll be writing and you lose steam and you don't know what to do again. You don't know what to write. Close it. Don't force yourself into it because that's when you might end up doing rubbish or writing rubbish. Close it. Go for a walk. Go watch a movie. Sometimes when you're watching a movie, your brain wakes up again. I like sleep. When you sleep and wake up, your brain wakes up refreshed. It's amazing. So if you're a creative person. Work with how your mind works and deliver the best out of what you have on the inside. Okay. Um, so when writing is done, we step into the next one, which is finalize your book title. So remember the book we talked about, the working title, the idea that was turned into a working title. Now it's time to finalize that title. So by this point, when you've written, you know that, okay, there's no way I cannot have my topic right now. You know, now you know what your topic could look like for real. If you're sticking to that working title and you feel, oh, it still looks good. I think this works. 
fine, stick to it. As much as, as much as possible, keep your titles easy. Don't make it confusing. Don't make it think, okay, I understand this title. You may not even understand it, but the person who is to read it doesn't understand it. Keep it simple and easy to consume because that title is what sells the book. That cover is what sells the book. So those of you who do not know what a mock-up is, this is exactly what it looks like. So I'm sure when you see people selling their books, they make it look like a proper book in a photo like this and they put that title on it. They even put phones in front, you know, so you see a phone, you know, version of the book and stuff. That's how good it can look. So there are some sites, I'll share with you some links you can use to make this happen for yourself. So you finalize your book title, design your cover if you hadn't. If you can do it yourself, fine, do it yourself or give it to a graphic artist. I always tell people that, I know you can design, you, know, you like your design, your design with lemon green is so fine in your eyes, but please, for marketing purposes, for business purposes, please pay a graphic designer, unless you are so good at design. I design my own books myself. I design a lot of my content myself to flyers. I do it myself because I'm pretty good at design. But if you know you are not too sure, because I wasn't good at design a few years back, but I improved because I kept on designing. Some of us just design one thing today and we're so happy because it's our first design. It's your first. People are going to encourage you. Wow, nice job. But please, if it's not marketable, it's not marketable. Respect yourself and not give it to a professional who will sell it well, who will design a, a cover that will be very sellable. Who do it professionally? Pay them to get it done because, you know, that is a very big investment when it comes to selling your book. Your cover is always sell your book. You know that time when people say, don't judge a book by your cover. I tell people, they will judge you by your cover. And that is the truth. People are going to judge your book by your cover because they can't read inside yet until they buy it. So they will judge by the cover. So as much as possible, invest in a graphic designer to get you a good marketable cover. And then do a mock-up that looks good, put it out there so people can visualize a book in real form. And then they can go ahead and buy it, all right? So the next step, yes, before I go into the next step, I'm going to share some tools. These are a few tools. When you come into our program, we have so much more to give you in terms of knowledge that you were going, you're going to use, tools, resources, even to the point of templates that we will give you. So even if you don't have, you don't know how to get it written, we have templates on Canva, we have templates on PowerPoint. If you're, if you're one who likes to use Microsoft tools like PowerPoint, we give you a template on PowerPoint since you are comfortable with it. Sit down there and write your book. So the templates are just there for you. Just edit and put in your content there and it looks like, it looks good, like a good book. All right. So um, here are a few tools I thought I should share with you. Headline Analyzer is one tool that should help you with your title. So you might want to visit it. Just click type Headline Analyzer in your, in your, in your, um, let me see. I could even write, the name here is also, is called Coach Schedule. All right, Coach Schedule. So you can, Type these two words, either um, deadline and analyzer or code schedule, and you'll see it appear. So just put that in Google. I'm going to just post this and stick it up there so you guys see it's code schedule. So go ahead and put this on, excuse me, on Google, and you'll see it. Or you put in headline analyzer, and you'll be able to, it gives you a, an interface where you can put in your sample title and then to, it will rate it. So it can give you 50%, 40%, tell you how to refine it, and that makes it better, and then you have a good title that works, all right? So that's a tool for you. Canva, for those of you who do not know Canva, this is one of my best tools ever. Canva is just amazing. For design, I even write my books in Canva. Right inside Canva, I write my books, and I get it done, and I turn it into PDF, and it is ready to be published, all right? So canva.com is a tool you can use to design if you want, or, you know, there are so many other tools out there. Or you can write it in, in um, if you're somebody who uses Corel Draw, fine, you can do that. I don't know how to use that for books anyways. If you're somebody who prefers to use Word or you want to use templates or PowerPoint and you know exactly what to do, the whole dimension you should be sure of is six by nine. So six by nine inches is what you should be thinking about when it comes to, that's the dimension right there on the screen. This book you see here is a six by nine inch book. And that's how most books actually come, six by nine dimension. This is a sample six by nine dimension. They usually always look the same with six by nine dimension, similar. All right, so they always look the same with six by nine. Another book here, six by nine dimension, very voluminous. <laughs> look at that. This is like how many pages? Please don't try this if you're doing ebooks. 524 pages. Wow, 
I haven't even finished it as a hard copy took less of an ebook. So please be very careful with how much you want to go in terms of, ah, I've not finished dropping my knowledge. Yeah, this knowledge is plenty. Please keep it for version two. Mm? Don't put it all into version one. <laughs> all right. So um, let's go to our next few steps. Step eight. Now you're done and you've defined it, your book, you've done your cover. It's now time to step right into being sure that your book is reviewed. It is preferred. So don't do it by yourself because what you can, what you can't see, somebody will be able, somebody else will be able to see. All right. What you are so subjective to, somebody else will be objective to. Do you get? So sometimes you may think this sentence looks so good. Oh my God, I'm gonna leave it there. Somebody else is gonna read it and say, No, this makes no sense. So as much as possible, give your book to a third party to read, all right, to review and proofread. Review in terms of okay, who's gonna review my book? Um, you can give it to somebody you know or you, to a mentor or somebody you respect. Please go through details of your book if the person has the time and give the person a, def a definite date to return it so that you don't keep you leave it to the person's discretion because if the person is going to finish it in six months time, that's the only, you just lose morale. So give the person a definite time and you know if they have the time to do it. If they don't, please give it to somebody else. All right, proofreading is important. Give it to an editor to edit for you. What for what the person is going to cross the T's, dot the I's, cancel out the repetitions, get it right and make sure it looks good in the eyes, all right? And then the last point there, which is, I put it in the middle, it should actually be at the end, transfer, which is review, proofread, transfer. Transfer will be, now it's time to turn that manuscript into a proper book. In this sense, you are putting it into the templates, the book template, or you are putting it into a six by nine version, or you are putting it in the right order where it will now have the, um, the um, um, dedication, to have acknowledgement, to have, you know, the title page, to have the ISBN page and all the copyrights. You know, I put it in the right order, in the proper book, everything under the right chapters. You've put pages, page numbers beneath. You've put, you know, you've put everything in order. That's all part of the transfer. So from manuscript to proper ebook. And now your book is, you can feel your book coming to life, like, whoop, you know? And that's how it should be. All right. So the last point there, not the last, the penultimate point, the, the second to the last point there is launch. Launch. So when you're done and your book is well and it looks good, it looks good, it looks, mwah, looks amazing in the eyes. The next thing you do is put it out, launch it, launch it, launch it. And amazing how we have platforms to support us with this, with digital tools. When we're in this space years ago, we struggled. But well, platforms like Seller have come to save the day. Seller helps us launch our book just perfect. Like, you know, it's so amazing to see that many of us struggled with, you know, if it was to sell to Nigerians, it wasn't hard. You know, I'm a Nigerian. Selling to Nigerians were no hard, was no hard because I would just say, okay, bye. You can pay into my account or however we want to do it. We can use any of these platforms. And then when they pay, we give them the book or we send it to their emails and stuff. But look at how Seller makes it so easy that, you upload your book on the platform and then um, people, you just need to give people the seller link because you now have a link that is where your, all your digital products are housed. And then people pay from any part of the world. They can pay because you have Stripe and you have PayPal. Oh my God, it made life so easy. Now I have Ghanaians paying for my products. I have South Africans, I have Kenyans, I have Americans, I have British. I have so many, and it's just sweet to see these alerts coming to go into my wallet and you know see those transfers and push it, push it, push it into my account. It's so much fun. This is not something we enjoyed when we were in this space years ago. We struggled, and thank God Seller came to save the day. In fact, they are one of my best platforms so far, honestly. All right, so if you haven't tried Seller, you should, especially when it comes to launching your ebook, because they have a specific point there where it is like ebook. And the beautiful thing about that is that they have the option of of you allowing people to read your book on the site itself. So you don't even have to, they don't have to download your book and take it, drop, take it into their phones and go what, read it whenever they like or save it on their folder. They read it right there. So I have people, I know a lot of people who do that where you can't download their books, just read it right there on the site. Me, I choose to like people, I choose to allow them to download my books, all right? And I'm sure a lot of you have those questions that in terms of plagiarism and all of that. If you have that question, you can drop it. If you don't, it's okay. We're going to treat it if you do. But those are things that the challenge is. But I really don't like to put my mind on plagiarism because if you do that, you will never get anything done. That's the truth. All right? That's the absolute truth. All right. The next thing is the last point. And I believe we are... Ooh, 
Woo, so good. The last point there is promote. Guess what? You put your book on seller, it's not going to promote itself. You have to send people there. Seller can do their part to promote their platform called seller. You will do your part to promote people to your book on seller. All right? So please promote. A book is not going to sell itself. That's why I tell people in my community, that book will not sell itself. That book, you just launch it. Oh, launch date. And then comments, people are saying, oh, congratulations. Oh, why are not? Oh, and he said, oh, thanks, guys. Oh, thanks, thanks, thanks. Oh, thanks to everyone who helped who, who congratulated me on my book launch. It was so amazing. I'm now an author, guys. And that's it. Tomorrow, you just announce it a bit. So, guys, did you remember my book yesterday? It's still out, though. Download, though. It's just going for 5K. It's just going for $6. It's just going for $12. They download. They go. Maybe two sales, five sales. 10 sales, 20 sales, first day. You know how it is now. First day, people are in a rush. Second day, the rush slows down. Trust me, guys. Nobody's going to rush your book more than you, the, the creator of that book. You have to rush them so that they rush you. That's how it works. So if you turn it down on day three, guess what? Sales ends. By that day three, nobody's buying again. And that's what's naturally going to happen. If you don't promote it, nobody's going to buy it. So you're going to choose, if you're going to start promoting it manually, talk about it, hit your head on the stone, let people know that this is here, ring the bell, make the noise, show them chapter one, tell them that, oh, chapter one looks so good. Come and get the rest. Entice them. You know how the suya man gives you meat to taste and then you buy. Entice them with one chapter. Let them, mm, and buy the rest, you know? You know, give them small, tease them a bit with what you said inside here. Tease them a bit with what people said, reviews, people who bought the books, what they had to say about it. Tease them with things that, you know, um, testimonials people had from the solutions they got from the book. You know, get a lot going. Just market that book rigor rigorously, guys. I've had people on my platform who are marketing that one book they wrote till dates. Till dates. It is over a year they're still marketing. One of them called me today. She's about to do a revised version of her book. That one book she wrote 2019, she launched on April 1st, 2019. She's about to write it. She's promoting that book over and over again. That book has gained her recognition. People now know her, about her and her area is one that is not common. Packaging. She teaches people about packaging and how to brand themselves in terms of, you know, their packaging of their products and stuff and so that they can export it. Not many people are in that, but she broke that ground with, with this book. And, you know, she's selling it so rigorously. Whether she sees sales or not, she's selling it so hard. Next thing, was it MasterCard or Visa? One of these brands, you know, um, discovered her and they had a, they did a, a celebration of her just a few weeks back. She's based in the US. You know, it's so amazing to see this, that people could, people could identify her even in that her sector that seemed that, like she was hidden. But she kept on making noise about her book. Another lady I am um, on our program made so much noise about her book, made so much noise about her. And guess what? One of these, um, um, this um, real estate realtors, this, um, um, what's the name? A drawing homes reached out to her. Some of you know that brand. Reached out to her and bought about 160 copies of her book. If you visit my website, which I'll be sharing shortly, you will see details. You will see stories. You will see stories of what people have done with, with you know. Let me just show you what that looks like. Um, I have details on my website, of course, which is, of course, pictures and stuff. And then I have, of course, when you click on it, you'll be able to visit seller.co. But if you want to just directly go into seller, go there and just sign up. And you come inside and we'll give you all the stories because you meet the people real time. All right. So is that, is, is that good, actually? Is that good? You've had, um, we said, I said Android Holmes reached out to her and bought about 160 copies of her book. Amazing. Amazing. We have a lot of good stories, juicy stories of people who have gained recognition and have been called to, to speak on platforms, to conferences, to speak, to host events, and they've been paid to do so all because they wrote a book, all because they authored a book. And so here are a few things I need you all to note, because a lot of us fall in that rabbit hole of, you know, we're lost in what we're doing. We don't know whether we should proceed. We don't know if this makes any sense. I need you to note this. It doesn't have to be perfect, all right? Your first book won't be the best. I tell you guys... Was it last year? I went into that first book I wrote to try to reread it. And I was like, Amber, you wrote this. Ouch. What's this? <laughs> I was like, oh my God, did you really write this? But guess what? I won't despise those days of Little Begins because that book is what brought me here. That book is what brought people to me that today so far have been able to help over 300 people write their books. From one book I wrote, 
one book that now looks very mediocre to me. All right, so your book, your first book won't be the best. So if you're really striving for perfection, please do not. That is a rabbit hole right there. Perfection is just a scam. I tell them every day. Perfection is a scam. You can never attain perfection. Because as you go, you find something that's perf more perfect than that what you thought was perfect. That's the truth. All right, you don't need to be an expert to write a book. You don't need to be an expert. You don't need to, to be an You don't need to be, oh, I'm a writer. I'm going to write 12 books. It's not by a writer. I've had somebody reach out to me and say, hi, Amber, I've written nine books. I've not been able to sell one. So there are people who are out there writing. I even have some articles on my page. I dare not read. If you're ready to scroll down, I, I, and I, I, um, I titled it, Why Writers, Why Most Authors, is it authors I called or writers? I just called it Why Most, most Authors Are Broke. And one of the reasons I gave there was because many of them see themselves as writers, not authors. There's a difference. There's a difference between being a writer and being an author. So you don't have to be a writer to author a book. As long as you have something in here and you're willing to share it, somebody's out there who's willing to get it and they'll pay for that book. You don't have to be a writer. Secondly, you don't have to write your book yourself. So if you're here thinking, I don't know how to write, I'm so good with English, it's okay. We have people who actually know what they want to write and then they pay a copywriter, they pay a ghostwriter, sorry, who puts what is in their head into writing. You pay them and they write it for you. Or you speak trans and people transcribe it for you into chapters. Amazing stuff. So you don't have to think. So many of us are giving ourselves objections and we think, ah, I can't do this because of this. No, no, no. You have no reason. If you drop your objection, I'll tell you why that will not work. Why there's a better way to do this. Or why there's a better way to think about it. All right. So you don't need to be an expert. As long as you have something in here, a knowledge, a expertise, experience, whatever, you can auto a book. Anybody can auto a book. Whether you have tech experience or not, you can still auto an ebook because you can outsource it. A lot of these things I mentioned today can be outsourced, whether from the writing to the design to the mock-up to the, to the um, reviewing to the um, transfer to the um, proofreading to even setting it up on seller, outsource it if you want, as long as you're ready to pay, all right? And then another thing people reach out to me and say is that, Amber, but I don't have an audience. Who will buy my book? Write the book and build the audience with it. Yes, that's what I did. I wrote my book on how to write your first ebook. And with that book, I built an audience of people interested in writing ebooks, people interested in digital products. Guess what? I put out the book on, for free. You can choose to do that, or you put your book for a very minimal sum, 1,000 or whatever, 2,000, something that people can reach out and get. But mine was a free guide. And with that guide, over 1,000 people downloaded that book. By, by the next two months, I had over 1,000 people who were ready to listen to me. From that same 1,000 people, I had a few people who entered my ebook launch program for the first time. And over time, till at this point, we, we've done this for two years already. So use that book to build an audience. This is, not, this is a classic case of um, who came first, the chicken or the egg. So it's not like you use the, it's not, you can't really say whether the book, will, whether it's book before audience or audience before book. Anyone follows. If you have audience already, fine, sell the book to them. Amazing. If you don't have audience, fine, write the book and build the audience with the book. Do you get Because your book will attract them to you. Amazing stuff. And then lastly, I also like to mention, don't procrastinate because many of us are pros at that. Please do not procrastinate. All right. If you want to get it done, get it done. If you need accountability, get into a program or get a partner, get somebody that will get you to do it. Put out a date that works and work towards that date. That date. Let people know that this is your date and they'll hold you accountable. Or you come into a program like ours, the 30 days program, and hold yourself accountable and hold you accountable rather and evict you if you don't get it right. So for you, you're going to be so, so, so um, ashamed of yourself to see that, A, you are evicting me. No, you won't be proud of yourself that way. So that will make you want to get it done. And how, what other better way when you see other people doing it with, with you? So you're like a team. Hey, guys, we can do this. And that's how you guys move to the finish line together. And next thing, you're all, you're all launching your books that may not need to be so perfect. Yes, let's hush it. It doesn't have to be so perfect. As long as it answers to people's needs, provide that book. My first book wasn't perfect. I look at it now and I cringe. I wrote that. Yes, but guess what? It answered to people's needs. So guys, I want you to change your perspectives when it comes to things like this and make sure you, you create it not for yourself, but people who actually need it because there are people out there who are depending on that knowledge that you have, but because of your habit of procrastination or fear or you are, you, 
if you are not good enough or if you are ah, no 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 you are delaying from helping people and because of that you know you are losing out on the value that you could have created in somebody's life and you don't want that happening so please do your best to make this happen. Do your best to put it out there. I believe many of you who joined this class are ready to do this. And I hope today's session has helped you see how far you can go with this. So this is basically um, my program, all right? Um, the 30 Days ebook Challenge. You can click the link and you to lead you to, or you just click and, and bookmark it, all right? Because this um, session is not over yet. We still have to wrap it up, all right? So that's the link and you join our 30 Days Challenge. Um, the price goes for 35,000 naira and you join us for 30 days. So it's almost as good as um, maybe 1,000 naira per day and then 5,000 naira per day for Amber, you know what I'm saying? So my point is get in there and get this done because at the end of the day, when you sell your book, you'll sell far more than that and we'll help you get it right so that you even sell. All right. So I think that's about it from my end and I want to see if we have any questions. So the 30 days challenge is ready for you. If you're ready to get in, we start on the 1st of May, which is just in a few days and get ready to launch your book on the 1st of June. Seller.co forward slash ebook launch program is the site to visit. All right. That's where you can sign up to join our 30 days ebook challenge. Question by Ivy Rosanna. Please, what's the best and easiest way to do a mock-up? I dropped the link there, a, a name, a tool you can use. It's called Adazing, all right? A-D-A-Z-I-N-G, all right? So let me just type it here. You can, you can use that to do a mock-up. That was the site I used to do my first mock-up, so easy, all right? Adazing, so it's adazing.com. Just go there and you'll see some mock-ups you can use to do your book. All right, what is your membership plan, please? Uh, what membership are you talking about? If you're talking about the ebook, 30 days ebook challenge, it's just a 30 days program and it's 35,000, or let's say talking about something else, glorious. All right. Adekule says, please explain what will be on a pre sale copy. What do you mean by what will be? All you need to put as a pre sale is the cover and the title. Tell them to buy it. You don't need to, they will not download it all. So it's not like you tell them to buy it and no, they'll pay for it and then you tell them to expect the book also, so and so date, which is the launch date. Then you go ahead and write that book for them because they're waiting for it on that date. So pre-selling does not mean when they pay, you start giving them the manuscript. No, it's called a pre-sell because the book is not ready. You pre-sell, they pay for it, and you tell them that they should expect the book, the book on so and so day. All right. So don't you don't need to you know, your question said explain what will be on the pre-sale copy. All you need to do is publish, put out a cover in a mock-up format. You write and all right and put it out there and let people just pay for it and buy it. Then when it's ready, you send it to their emails. Okay. Charles says I've launched disappointing sales so far. Charles, the question is: Did you pre-sell? Did you validate? Did you ensure that people wanted it? Secondly, have you promoted it? When I say promotion, it may not just be your own. Um, personal promotion which is very you know organic you can go through the ads way do facebook ads promote some of us think we can rely only on hashtags if you want your book to go far put ads on it put ad money on it and send facebook to do their work they'll send your book to the right people and people will pay for it glorious is saying must i have an instagram page before i launch my book ah it's not my instagram glorious so if you have whatsapp people on whatsapp that's an audience right there Start telling them in their stories. Stop putting it and let them know. If you have Facebook, start telling people on Facebook. If you have Twitter, what if it's TikTok? If it's um <laughs> please, audience is audience. If you are in a church, I know church can give you platform. Climb that stage and tell them about your book. You know, especially if you know your, your target market is there and your book will empower people in church or something. If as long as you have an audience somewhere, if you are an admin of a group and you think this will benefit your members. Give it to them. Tell them. If you're on Telegram and you belong to all those groups that have 5,000 people, close super group, this one, tell them, dear. So it doesn't matter. It's not by Instagram or whether by, by YouTube or any location you are, as long as there's an audience, inform them that you have a book. All right? As long as your okay. audience are there. So we have another question for, from Twins. Um, it says, which software can prevent illegal sale, especially from those who bought it? Wait, I don't understand that question. Illegal um, sales. So, Twin, maybe you could rephrase your question. Yes, please, but because I... it's confusing. <laughs> yeah. 
we saw fear can prevent illegal sale, especially from those who bought. Okay, I think he's saying that prevents Whoa. people from selling your book illegally. Reselling. I'm sure it means reselling. Maybe people who yes. bought it and want to resell it to more people. Hey, yes. you know, that's another thing. See, guys, as a creative, this is one of the things you would deal with. Trust me, a lot of people are dealing with it. Aki and Labi keeps on shouting every day of how people are buying and selling his book on the express, on the road. Guess what? If I were you, I would worry less about plagiarism or about what people are doing with my book as much as possible. I know I, I even wrote something about that and I put it in my highlights. I spoke about, about um, this particular topic of plagiarism and I put it in my highlights on IG about how if you want to start pursuing people who is reselling, which software can I find? That energy yeah, isn't pursuing them. You should have been to sell more books, more copies of that book. Because... I know, I know some people even look at it like they feel flattered, like, okay, if people are selling my book, that means it must be a good book. That's some, 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 something to, to take home with you. It must really be that good because people don't sell counterfeits. People don't, you know, you, money is so good that it has to, there has to be counterfeits. They are only, there's only fake because original exists. So the truth of the matter is, if your book is so good, people will want to steal it. You can't avoid that. What can you do? Keep selling because there are still people there who want it. What we do about these people that they've carried their films, their movies, and gone to Alaba Market to sell these cheaper versions, or artists like David Doe and all that who will sing song and then sing their song is free. Meanwhile, you should be paying for the song. They just rely on okay, if you want it free, then they now look for other means to make money from that free. So they put it on YouTube and then make money from YouTube. So the truth of the matter is, well, instead of them to go and start pursuing police, um, music police, please come arrest people who shared my book for free. There's no point. It's, you're just going to. This is going to tire yourself because we're doing it's just point pointless for showing people. So I don't know about software. There are some technologies that can do one or two things. But guys, if you really want to go the part of having people just read on the site, then try seller. Seller has the option of having people read the book on the site. That way you can curb the essence, the extent to which people can resell. All right. But if people are downloading your book, you can't avoid it. You can't start pursuing them. Even if you can look for one, there's one kind of software I hear that can actually prevent people from sharing the book. I heard the software is very expensive. I didn't even bother checking how much because I'm not even bothered by that. I heard there's so there's also another way you can use you can password you can password your PDF documents. But on, for me, all of that is stress. You password it. Someone needs to put, use their password to open the book. Guess what? When they are sending it to the people they are selling it to. They will send the people the password as well. So how else do you want to curb this matter? When people ask me always in my community, I tell them, see, no matter how you look of, think of solution, I would rather rely more on selling my book rather than pursuing thieves. All right. So I hope that helps you see things in a different dimension. Okay. Um, other questions? Wow. Awesome. Uh, okay. So we have another question here that says, um, isn't there a discount for us that attended this webinar? I think it's for the ebook challenge. Person is asking. Okay, see what I mean. I thought of the same question. I was hoping nobody would ask you, but try this person not asked. <laughs> okay, here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> for the purpose of seller, I'm going to I'm going to do some, I'm going to give a discount only on seller. So some of you who probably want to think you go and visit my site, you will see if you go to my site, you will see all the information there, my website, you might get to see all the information there, the stories, the pictures, all of that. But guess what? You can only come and buy it on seller for cheaper. And I'm going to just maybe slash 5% off it. So anybody who buys it on seller, remind, I'm going to email after this person, I'll just move over there. Or if you pay now, I'll refund your 5,000. It's okay. All right. So I'm going to be selling it on seller for just 5,000. For, sorry, for 30,000, not 35. Oh, no, did I say 5,000? For 30,000, the 30 days challenge for 30,000. But if you get it on my website, it's 35, which is for the general public. All right. So, and that is just valid for until we start this challenge. So if anybody's watching this video, when we have entered into the challenge, or later, later on, sorry, this does not apply to you. <laughs> you can just buy it at the fee it is at that time. All right, so yes, you can have a discount. Just buy from seller and you'd have 5K off, all right? I think that is a good deal, isn't it? <laughs> thank you, thank you. On behalf of everyone, thank I you. appreciate it. <laughs> okay. So we have another question here. Um, it says, can you be inspired to write something that is entirely different from your line of business? Of course. I mean, okay, but here's the deal. There's something I always tell people. Be careful what you write about. 
You know why? Because that topic you write on has a tendency to blow you up. When I say blow, I mean blow you in the eyes of people, give you exposure. So be careful what you write about. If you are one who is a makeup artist and tomorrow you want to write on um, sex, you will write on sex, guess what? As more people read your book, they will know you as a sex specialist. As more people read your book, they will start calling you to TV shows. They will start calling you to come and speak on their IGTV. They will come and start, you know, they will start knowing you as a sex writer, as the person who, the author of this amazing book on sex. And that is what you've been known for. Guess what? When you now say, oh, guys, oh, wait, oh, wait a minute. I'm a makeup artist. Nobody wants to hear that anymore. <laughs> because they, they knew you because of sex, not because of makeup. Do you get my point? So be, I, I always let people know, be careful what you write about because it has a tendency to make you known for that topic. I wrote my first book on how to write your first ebook. Before I knew it, people started calling me the ebook girl. Amber, ah, ebooks, meet Amber. Amber is the ebook girl. <laughs> so it's only after a while I started expanding more beyond ebooks. I started including online courses, teaching people how to create online courses, going to more digital products and stuff. But I started with ebook, pounding it, ebook, ebook. You come to my page and that's all you see, ebook. I kept on because that was my book. That was what was drawing people to me. I had the ebook challenge. So much was going on around ebooks, and that was all I spoke. The language I spoke was ebooks. People knew me for ebooks. So even if you go and today, a lot of people reach out to me because anybody who tells them, I want to write a book, who do you recommend? Talk to Amber. Find I dare not read. She's the one person for this. They know me as the person for this. All right. So find, join her challenge and you get your ebooks out. I've had people reach out and say, Amber, you, are, you inspired me to write my book knowingly. Like you didn't even know, but you were inspiring me and my book is out now. And it's amazing. I had people who joined the challenge, did not finish it in 30 days. They left, of course, they were evicted. And along the line, they launched their books because they were part of something phenomenal. So, be careful what you do if you want to write in another field because if it blows, <laughs> that means you have to blow with it though. Be following it and blowing and growing. <laughs> so yes, you can, but be careful because it has a tendency to blow up. You know, you don't know what will be viral before you, before you create it. Many people who do viral songs, they don't know it to be viral. They just push it out, allow nature, allow, allow the universe to consume it. Next thing, it is viral. Eh? I didn't know even how I've done like this, but guess what? It's gone. Next thing, they are known for that. And when people know you for that, they will track back. So that means an example of an, a, an artist. This girl, Tani, that's her name, right? That girl, um, when she sang her Tenny. song, uh -huh, Tani, thank you, entertainer. She became known for one popular song like that. I don't even remember the song. Next thing, everybody's like, ah, that was last year, or was it last two years? Next thing, Tani became hot. Ah, she was <laughs> yes, that's the song. Thank you. You know, she became known for that song. Next thing, she was the hottest musician around. Hey, I've been listening to Tenny. She's a pain on every show. Guess what people did? From listening to Tenny and seeing that, ah, this is the hottest girl around, they tracked back. That's how people started discovering that. Hey, it's not today's thing, you know, they started discovering her old songs. That's what's going to happen. The moment you write a book that becomes, that blows up, people will track back to what have you done in the past? Let's blow it up as, as well. So when they go back to your past and they see that sex, makeup, Where's the connection? They can't quite grasp, grasp it. Okay, so please, as much as possible, if you want to go in the line of that direction, just be, just give tendency for that direction to be the one that will lead you a whole nine yards, All right? So that's why I say be careful what you write on. When I wrote on how to write your first ebook, I didn't expect that I would circle in on digital products. I just went on my page one day and I said, so guys, would you like to write your, why, why have you not written, um, okay, no, I ask people, what's that one thing you can teach people even in your sleep? People start answering questions. Yes, I can teach people how to make hair. I can do, I can, I can do this, in, I can do this in my sleep. I can lay the bed on my sleep, in my sleep. I can, I can cook, I can do yogurt, I can cook rice, I can blah. Next thing I said, well, then why are you not, the next question I put out was, then why are you not, if you follow my stories, my highlights, you see the, the, the history of how I came about this ebook launch program, the 30 days challenge. You see the post I put up. I've, I've shared it as a story on my highlights. So you can go there and check. There's so much you can consume on my page. All right. So ask, the next question I asked them was, so why are you not teaching people this? And people are like, I don't know how to do it. I don't know. I said, okay, you know what? 
The next post I put out was, okay, how about I teach you guys how to write an ebook? Would you, would you want that? That was me validating. Next thing they were like, oh, yes, yes, we want that. I said, okay, you know what? Next post I did that was, okay, you know what? I'm going to come and teach how to write an ebook in a webinar, and you all will learn it there. How is that? Oh, yes, we're looking forward to it. Next thing I changed my mind, I said, no, you know what? I'm going to teach you how to write your ebooks in an ebook. And that's what gingered me to write my first ebook on how to write your first ebook. It was just phenomenal to see that. That was my first time of ever trying it. And in it, I was teaching people how to do it for their own first time. And that book has led me this far. So I have to be careful. If that first thing I wrote was on how to cook pande yam, by now, maybe lucky, this webinar would have been a pande yam digital webinar because people have to find a way to coin it into digital. <laughs> Well, maybe I want to be the customer on this platform. That's what I mean. But my point is, be careful what you start, what you, what you create your book on, because it has a tendency to, to make you an authority in it. So I'm now an authority in digital products. That's because of the decision I took to write a book on digital products, an ebook. So you have to aim at the, becoming an authority, which is what makes you different from a writer. A writer just writes. See the guy that told me I've written nine books. I'm sure they are all different topics. That's why he seems, you know, everywhere. Nobody knows where he, you know, okay, he's writing. Okay, continue writing. But an authority will write one book, Seth, and sell the hell out of that book. Akia Labi sold that one book. Now he just released the next book, selling to Nigerians. He's going to sell the hell out of that book. Like, see this woman, Arese, what's her name? That's her name now, Arese. I hope I'm pronouncing it well. Wrote that one book, Smart Money Woman, Authority. So she didn't need to write up to 20 books. She became an authority in financial literacy. You should be aiming for that. Don't just write because I'm a writer. I want to become a writer. Become an authority. That's what you should write for. That's what you should author your books for. Author to become an authority in a subject. If there's anything you're going to take out of here, be, let it be that. Author a book to become an authority in that topic. Because guess what? You who wrote that book will be seen higher than the rest of, the rest of your peers, the rest of people in your sector. You'll be seen in a level higher than them because you've shared knowledge that they did not share. The rest of them are just create, buy my market, buy my shoe, buy my bag. You've shared knowledge. You've shared expertise. People are going to trust you more than you trust them. And that's what your book does. It builds authority, builds recognition, builds, you know, builds some kind of dignity around your brand. And it just makes, it just pushes you far higher than the rest of people who are still struggling on the lower part of this pyramid. You just go higher on the pyramid. And that's how you keep Blue zooming. All right. Any other questions? Wow, wow. Auto to become an authority. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so we have another question here. If you if you can meet up to pay for the May batch, when is the next batch? I think this is about the ebook challenge. So okay, this will uh, be the ebook challenge. We actually have it by monthly. We tried to do it monthly, but it was causing a strain on, on the project. So we now do it bi-monthly. So if we finish this on the first of um first of June and the launch, the next batch will have to start on the on the first of of July to launch on the first of August. You get so we allow that period so people can promote their books and stuff, and then we now promote towards the next batch, which is which is 1st of July. So if you can't meet up now, you can meet up on the 1st of July. Another thing you can do is don't delay in this thing. If you know you can at least, you know, get started, if you know you can, you know, invest something, just sort yourself out and, you know, make this happen. Try to do it. Because the, more, the tendency is that if you leave it for later, you may never get it done. And truth of the matter is, as we go and we keep pushing later, the price gets higher. So <laughs> it's, it's counterproductive if you are saving 30k now to pay through um to pay through seller and by july is now 40k and the offer on seller is not even is not even there anymore so you are now struggling again to pay higher you know so if you can if you can afford it now 30k you have 5k off by paying through seller pay and get in for the maze batch okay awesome so we have another question um it says, what are the other sites to research aside Amazon? What are the other sites? To okay. Other places you can research ideas or research what other people are saying about your book idea would be go to places like Quora. 
Let me type Kura here in the sticker. I take out a daisy. Kura, some of you know it, Kura.com. Go there and type your business, your book idea, what you want to write about. And hear what other people are saying. You know, those are places to do research. Another thing about research is that you can do surveys. Reach out to people personally and ask them questions. If you have groups, just tell them, please, guys, can I take just five minutes of your time? I just have a few questions to ask you. What do you guys think about this topic? Do you think it's, do you think it's something you would want? Those are places to get, to get answers to your research questions. Another place you can do a research outside of Amazon is the comment section of your competition. So your competition, somebody you know who wrote something closer to this or who is in the same sector and is writing something similar to what you're about to write about. And yeah, you want to get some, some tips and ideas. Go into the comment section of her posts. Hear what others are saying. Hear what her customers are saying. Those will give you tips so that you know how to improve on your own. Maybe there are tips there because they'll be saying, ah, ma, I like what you wrote in this part. It's just that this other part, you did not go there. You will see answers. So in your own book, you add those parts that they, they said they did not see in her own. And that place you can get research outside of Amazon is Facebook groups. Facebook. So go to groups. Do a search on Facebook for your topic. Enter groups. What are people saying? What are people asking in such close niche groups? Ask them. Find out. Do searches. Find out what people, the conversations people are having around that topic. This will give you insight for what to write about so that you answer people's direct questions. So what I mean is that, in essence, go into places where people meet together. Forums, Naira Land, places that you know that people gather and talk. Groups, niche groups, niche forums. Um, there's another forum, what's the name? Um, Reddit. But I, don't, I know that Reddit is not too common for us Nigerians, but there is the lot abroad. You know, but my point is, find where people gather and talk about topics. That's where, those are where secrets lie. Hidden insights that you can use to improve on your book. All right, so I hope that answers your question. This one is about the challenge. It says, um, what is covered in the payment? I think this person is talking about the ebook challenge payment. Sorry. Okay. Okay, can you guys see this? But if you even visit the seller page, you would see details on, you know, what is covered. All right, this is what we do on our 30 days challenge. We help you, you know, 30 days guidance, supervision, you know, giving you practical tips, you know, best practices, giving you tutorials, videos. We have videos hosted like a complete course and it is scheduled day by day. So for day one, you go watch the video for day one. Very short, quick videos, but they're telling you exactly what to do because we have a timetable. So each day is designated to doing something. And then we have a video showing you how to do that particular thing. So there's so much covered in there to, you know, teaching you how to set up your page online. Of course, on sites like Seller, we have details on how to set it up on Seller. We have details on how to market your book. The things you shouldn't do when it comes to launching or marketing your book. We have information also on on how to upload your book. We have a course, a full-blown course there on how to upload your book on Amazon and Okada Books. So you don't have a problem when it comes to uploading your book on or, or publishing your book on Amazon, whether as um, Kindle copy or as paperback. Paperback is a hard copy of your book in terms of the fact that if somebody pays for your book on Amazon, they can choose to buy paperback, being that they will pay, they will put um, the book, will, they can choose to sell it as paperback, being that if people click to buy paperback version, Amazon will print your book and send to people. That's how a lot of people you know. Today you see posts that are saying that are saying, ah, somebody from Germany bought our book. You do you think the person the person printed the book here and start looked for God is good mottos or young shall grow and sent it to somebody in Germany? <laughs> or you know, way build or whatever. No, many of them sold it through Amazon. That's how people could get their books abroad. I I did I did publish it for somebody at some point and that was when I was still doing publishing for people. And I did a book on Amazon, you know, paperback and Kindle. Next thing, she had somebody in Germany download her book, you know, sorry, buy her paperback version, take a picture of it. I have some of these pictures on my page as well, if you're ready to go all the way down, you know, take a photo, you know. And she was so happy to see her book in Germany. That's what Amazon makes possible. Your book can, can travel to any ends of the earth and you'll be paid in foreign currency. So it's, it's an amazing opportunity here, not, in, not just in terms of building authority, but in terms of making money. I've earned over, in fact, 
I've earned so, so much. I don't want to have to be too definite with figures, but I have earned massively from from for my ebooks for my for my own was not even that i sold the ebook my book my book was free but the outcome of that ebook was the ebook launch program and i've earned massive income from that so you, you never know what if that creation of the book today may turn into tomorrow maybe that from that book you create an online course maybe that from that book you create a, an accountability program from that book you create some kind of you know consultancy outfit so when people read the book they want one-on-one -on -one consultation next thing you, they pay to consult with you from that one book, you can be paid to speak at events. There's so much opportunity. From that one book, you know, put it out on platforms like Amazon so people internationally can see your book. You promote it on with Facebook ads. I mean, amazing opportunities that you can get as a result of writing that one book. So when I tell people milk your book, I know what I'm saying. Milk it. Like, since I wrote my first book, I'm not sure I've written a second book. No, because I'm still making, milking that first book. And I, I'm still not sure what my second book will be. I'm still milking that Facebook to your date. So milk it. All right. I don't know whether I answered the question right. But there's some, uh, we also offer you some templates that you can use to write your book. There's so many resources and videos that we've offered you in our challenge that makes it so easy. In spite of the fact that when you come in, you meet a community of authors or people like you who came to join the program also and want to launch their own ebook. So you're meeting people who have launched and are sharing with you their mistakes and experiences so that you don't repeat. Because anything you want to do, say, oh, no, don't go that route. We did that, it didn't work. How about you do it this way? So people are already there to support you and show you how to go about it because of their own experiences. Amazing. So that, that's like a wrap up of our offer. And if you visit my site, um, you should be able to see more details on this. If you visit uh, my site, but. Here's it right here. If you want me to give you more details on this, you can, but it's only on seller you'll be able to buy for 30,000 naira. So you'll be able to get in for 30,000 naira, okay? So um, I don't know if I've answered the question. I have to stop sharing because this looks confusing. All right, so I don't know if I've answered the question. Hopefully, I think you have. Uh, yeah. So we have another question. It said, mm -hmm. you mentioned a dazing for the cover mock, for the cover mock up. So I want to know the software one can use for the main content. Is it Microsoft Word or Google Docs, etc.? Uh, okay. That's to write. Okay, the book. okay. To write the book, you can, you know, okay. Even if, for me, I like I said earlier, I use Canva to write my books. All right, I use Canva to write my own book, and I I also teach people how to use Canva in the program. I teach you how to use Canva to write your content. All right. If you want to, if you don't want to go that route, fine. You can use you can use um, um, platforms like you know Word or or PowerPoint. But guess what? There are settings that you have to put. It's not just something you, you don't just open a Word document and start typing. When you want to turn into a real book, there are some settings you will use. Like I published. Somebody reached out to me to help her with you know editing her book and i just i don't do that service broadly i just do it for a few people if if, if they're if they're willing to pay me and she was willing to pay so she needed me to publish her book she has written it already and she needed it to be you know refined and everything and transformed from manuscript to book guess what i actually just got the book translated it into same microsoft word because i know the technique around it now because i've done this for a long time and i know what to look out for so I turned that book to a proper book, from manuscript to a proper book using MS Word. And all that is not information you see every day. All right? Use the MS Word. I use the right dimensions. I put the right margins in order. As long as you have all that right, you should be able to write a proper book and upload it anywhere and print it anywhere and it's still a good book. As long as you have the right dimensions. So what, may, what matters is that it's not just like somebody who holds a camera. It's not the camera that is a problem. It's what you do with it. Some people say, ah, my camera doesn't have 12 megapixels. It doesn't have 50 megapixels. Yeah, the megapixel is too low. It's not by that. You see someone with two megapixels, half megapixel, putting out good shots. What matters is what you do with the tools you have. Those tools you have, PowerPoint, MS Word, this one, they have so much power in them, but we are underutilizing them. So yes, what I do is that I go to Canva and I design my books on Canva. The next option is that I have books designed on PowerPoint, which is what I said earlier that we have templates on our program that when you join, we'll give you the template, PowerPoint template. So you just use them and type your book content inside and your book is ready. Looking like a proper book, the places, the book is designed, the, we have up to like five we'll give you free as long as, long as you are inside the program. 
you go choose any of the five you want to use if you don't want to but use this one fine use it use whatever works for you and then translate your book into just edit the content edit the chapter names and put your book in there and your book is good to go so we make that easy for people so they don't have to worry about looking for dimension or going to going to struggle with canva or spending so much time they just write their book in those templates and their books their books are good to go all right so i think that's about it any other question or that's it for today um, one more question it's going to be the last i think it's about the challenge um person is asking if they can pay instrumentally like maybe two three times i don't know so <laughs> the thing is <laughs> oh my god the thing is because it is it's the program is starting already I don't know the extent which I can allow for um, for deposits. I mean, if somebody pays, say two, three times for 30k, I'm basically pay 10k now, 10k, and I start pushing. That's my problem. I don't know how to push people, you know. So it's always a challenge for me. So I and I've had people who come in and say, please, can I pay 15k now? Pay the remaining 15k and 25k later, blah blah blah. No problem. And I'll say, oh yeah, come. Next day, I start pushing it for no, no, no. I don't even like to do that. That's, next thing they go and that's it. So what I told myself was that I'm going to just stop this. I'm not going to collect any installments. So pay, pay when you can. Come in and do this. All right. When you do it and you put out your book and you learn the ropes in the business, you'll be able to make more than that. So it's a, it's worthy, it's a worthy investment. I've also had people reach out to me and say they can't pay. It's too expensive. Well, I saw them go to go and pay for something of 150k outside. You know. So the question is, how valuable is this to you? All right, how valuable is this to you? If it is, then come in and do it, make it happen. It's just 35k. I've seen people who do who do um things lesser than what we are offering in here. I mean, if you sell the Amazon course inside alone, it's going for 25k currently. Amazon course inside. If you sell that one alone, I have it on my on my site, www.idenore.com forward slash Amazon course. Selling for 25k alone, then and I brought it into the book launch program. If so, are we saying that the rest of the challenge 30 days challenge is now 10k? <laughs> you get me the talk less of now that reduced 5k. That means 25k for Amazon course because I'm not even the one that recorded the Amazon course. I partnered with somebody in house who has sold over ten thousand dollar worth of products on Amazon or her ebooks on Amazon. And I said, you know what, Lucy, come do this, you're better at this than me. Come record the course on Amazon. Let's partner together. And we sold it together. We created the course together. She did most of the recording. I'm doing the marketing. And we're selling that course outside of the ebook launch program. But we, have, we now brought it into the ebook launch program. And the cost of the program is still 35K. So if the book is with 5K, or rather the Amazon course alone is with 5K, that means the program of 30 days of challenge and you know helping you launch your book is 10K or what. So please, it's a worthy investment. Many of you spend more you spend more than that on airtime or data. Is I think you should actually look at investing it into something that will turn into an authority someday or very soon, and then you start earning good value for what you know. All right. So that's about it. I think we should end now. If not, we'll never end it. <laughs> yes, yes, please. Thank you so much, Amber, for coming online. And this presentation was. The person was amazing. I learned a lot, and you, <laughs> you blew you. Our, all our minds. You blew our minds. Away. Thank, you. Thank you so much. So please, um, if you are looking to write your ebook, please join this challenge, the 30 days challenge. You're going to get accountability. I can vouch for her on that because I've joined a lot of our groups, personal Facebook group, and I've taken a lot of our courses, and I know what she's capable of. And the community support is very, is, is massive, like 1,000%. So please <laughs> sign up for the course, uh, 30 days ebook challenge. 